everybody, I want you to see the newest member of our vehicle family. This is the Ford Mustang Mach-E Premium Extended Edition. And I have been loving driving this thing since New Year's. We've got uh, the two-wheel drive edition with the extended range, and it has every premium feature that you can get installed, from the self-driving Blue Cruise to uh, self-parking, the full moonroof, and uh, the automated rear end. The one thing uh, that uh, is really important to me, uh, taking care of my parents, is their ease of being able to get in and out. Being able to use my phone as a key has been really nice. I haven't had to keep my keys on me this entire time. And there's plenty of storage to put things uh, like mobility and uh, things like that for my elderly parents in the back. And as you can see, there is a lot of room back here and you can make even more room with a single button click to bring down the back seats. But the one thing I can't store in my 2021 Mach-E is uh, this. My specialized road bike. Won't fit in the back, as you can imagine, without taking off the wheels and, and, and nobody got time for that. So to fix that issue today, we're going to be installing a provided, not sponsored, but provided trailer hitch that is going to be installed by my friend uh, and mechanic, Peter and we're gonna see how easy it is and rate that, as well as uh, how sturdy it feels and the installation steps we had to take and how easy it was to follow those steps along to put this trailer hitch, which will be adapted to use this two inch bike holder for the rear of the car. So come along with me as we uh, see how this brand new accessory for the Ford Mustang Mach-E does and get some first time impressions uh, see if it's something that's right for your fit, whether you're hauling bikes like me or if you're towing a small U-Haul trailer or boat and uh, see if it's the right fit for your purpose too. The Eco Hitch that was sent to us by Torquelift Central, made in the USA, comes with the hitch itself, mounting brackets, the installation instructions for home installation, all of the mounting hardware and cabling. And this one specifically is rated for 550 carrying tongue weight in pounds as a, a trailer weight rating of 3,500 pounds. And uh, we're gonna not be nearly that much towing bikes, but that's the hitch in the truck, uh, in the trunk rather. And we're basically gonna be putting that right down here. And I believe there's gonna be a little cutout we're gonna have to make to uh, get that to work. We need to be able to cut all that out I so that so. it goes straight in like that. So one thing we just noticed is the instructions say you're gonna cut a three inch wide hole underneath the light here. But uh, if you do that, it doesn't line up with the photo which shows three inches from center. So the instructions not super clear on whether it's supposed to be just three inches wide or three from the center. So uh, we're gonna take a look at it with a more uh, strenuous eye for all the measurements and see what makes sense. Yep. Seven inches literally puts it right at that bracket. Yeah. Right. So we're going to start with a three inch cut by seven inch. That's going to put us right up against the uh, kick sensor. And if it needs to be widened, uh, we'll be able to do that. Whereas if we start with the wider cut, we can't exactly add the bodywork back. That's good. So we're going to tuck any uh, wiring up and out of the way so we don't cut through it when we trim the body. There we go. All right, 
right, so here's our first test fit to make sure that three from the center, so an uh, inch and a half either side of center, is the accurate measurement. Or if we need to go a little wider. There's a flange on the end here, so you won't be able to poke this part through. Oh, look at oh, that. It's money. Gorgeous. It's money, yeah. dude. So in the photos from the, uh, the instructions, the lines are drawn out here, but you do want to follow three inches exactly on the cut, inch and a half from the center on either side. Uh, I would leave the tape on for a little okay. bit, you know, just so that you don't scratch uh, around the paint, okay. you know, because this is painted. Yeah. But, you know, we're just trying to break all of this snaggly melted plastic off from the saw blade. So just doing nice, a little bit of cleanup. Clean. Our next cut will be uh, six inches wide and three tall on the, uh, uh, the rear, rear, on the rear belly plate of the uh, underside of the bumper, just above the horse emblem. So this wire goes on to the bolt that's going to go into Here. right up there, so, so you don't do? lose it. I'm You're gonna thread that. Fishing these pieces in, I'm gonna put this up into the hole in the side and down out where we want yeah. the bolt to come through. And then I'm gonna mm -hmm. drop this spacer in, and now that goes exactly where I need it to go. Yep. And, and then I can pull the drag bolt. Drag the bolt through. Right through. And just like it says on uh, figure 6.1 here, on some vehicles it may be necessary to slightly enlarge hole C, which is the one on the side, uh, to get the hardware to fit. And that's what we're finding is being required for this to get the head of that screw to uh, fit. So that's the amount that the head needed to be going through that was enlarged. Just that little guy right there. This line, we've already got the spacer, the, uh, and the nut being threaded through now. There's uh, this Boom. nut, bolt. the bolt. All right, so now we fish through both of the bolts on either side, and we're ready for the next step. We just removed the nuts and washers from the centermost pins on these braces here on the driver and passenger side. So because we're using a large jack to keep the car up, we're just using this guy to hold our new part up. But you can use a friend or a 2x4, whatever makes sense for your situation. But in this case, since I'm filming and Peter here is doing the install, this is our third set of hands. That's a much better idea than trying to do this by hand. Be incremental with it. Yep. So we're leaving these specifically somewhat loose uh, so that when we install the brackets on the front end, we'll have a little bit of shimmy room in order to make sure that that's all snug before we tighten everything down. But for now, we can remove our jack and continue with the next step. There it is. Because there's a lip here this has a stacked piece of metal ah. so that it goes right inside that and pokes okay. out nicely. Yeah, so that stacked piece of metal allows us to fit flush up against those two rivets. Uh, and then they cut a big hole. Nice big hole, so you can be a little bit adjusting with it. Well, so that's so that the washered Oh, that's an inset. Inside. Okay. Yeah. So that's an inset, and you can't guess left from right incorrectly now. And these are the original uh, washers and whatnot. And because these have a hole that's just the correct size for the studs, uh -huh. yeah. we, that is our locating point. Okay. We don't have to worry about yeah. it being sloppy side to side. So this guy is tight uh, first off, and then we can match the rest of it to this as our, our zero point. 
And you want to get them as tight as you can because you only have a few turns left on those bolts. Yeah. So I'm going to go back and yep. tighten those with a proper wrench. Yeah. Right. Now we got the most of the way there with the electric. He's finishing it off with the hand wrench. Next step is going to be on the L bracket side. Outside is where the bolt's coming through, connected to the uh, nut on the inside. Follow the instructions. All right, so now everything's cinched up. We're putting the, uh, the noisemaker back on and untuck the wiring harness so we didn't forget. So that'll be plugged in here shortly as well. All right, now that we've got everything secured, we need to put the sub wiring harness for the rear here back into place and uh, pin it back up to where it goes so it's not dangling anymore. And you can see how close that was and why we had to remove it for our test fits. It would have been in the way. So the reason why this had to be wider than our original cut was so that it could go over the metal coming out of here. And that just slides right up into there. Very nice. Well, there we go. After just over an hour and a half, give or take, there's our, uh, our finished product. Now the question is, all right, so in order to get the tail sensor to work, you basically just have to kick on the sides. There we go. A little, little more finicky. Though. Yeah, so it's not as good as without it, but if you get the right spot, it still comes down and still comes back up, hands-free. So just as they promised, it's still functional. And I think it's worth the finickiness to have the hitch. It's, it's very much looks like part of the car. All right, we've got it home. We're gonna do our first test fit of an accessory into the hitch. Oh, very nice clearance. Put our bolt through. Well, the installation with, especially with the professional helping was a really big hit. And I hope that some of the stuff we went over uh, helps you out if you're trying to install this either at home or taking this to a professional. Obviously, if they know what they're doing and have installed similar hitches, this is not gonna be anything to them. Uh, drilling out a little bit or cutting out a little bit of the frame to get those bolts through, as well as the measurements for uh, the three inch on the outside for the cut were really the only things that we had a, a hitch, if you will, pun intended. But uh, other than that, it was really simple to install and driving this on the highway with the bikes on it, I felt very at ease. And it's super simple to get the bikes on and off. And uh, I think this is gonna make it a lot easier for us to go on adventures without having to worry about marring up the inside of the Mach-E. Well, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. And of course, you can check out uh, Auto House where we got the actual unit installed as well as where to buy this down in the description let us know what you think and if you're intending to buy one we want to hear from you thanks for watching bye